So in a hash, unlike an array or a linked list, when we add data to our hash, and here's our chained hash again, of course, what we do is we get a piece of data. We, get, we take its key. We get the hash code from the key. We make it positive, and we mod it on the table size, and we choose where to place that piece of data based on the hash code that we get from the key. We get the next piece of data. We add it to our data structure, the next piece, and add it. And so unlike a linked list where we always, for example, add to the beginning or add to the end, um, in a hash, we can't guarantee the order of the data in the data structure, right? Because we're doing it based on, on the key, based on the hash code we get back, and then we manipulate that. When we resize the, the table, as we saw last week, uh, sorry, last class, when we resize the table, the order of all the data changes. And so for our iterator, where we're going to return the keys, we cannot guarantee the order of the keys. In most languages, when you use a hash, they will say, we will give you constant time access to your data. We'll give you constant time adding to your data. But the cost of that is that you lose the order of the, the keys. In the reader, Riggins says you should therefore take the keys and sort them before you return them or before you iterate through them. But I don't agree with that because if you want to sort the keys, that's fine. You can get the keys, you can get all of the keys back and then do the sort separately. But for an iterator, it doesn't make sense to me necessarily to sort the keys before you return them in an iterator. And so for our iterator, we're not going to sort them. What we're going to do is just provide all of the keys um, in some in some order. So let's take a look at our iterator helper class that we have to write. And this is going to be very similar to the iterator helper class that we wrote in the linked list. But the way that we're going to do it is we're going to go through the list and we're going to, we're going to start off, we're going to make an array with exactly the right number of places for the number of elements that we have in our hash. And then we're going to go through our hash. We're going to go to every entry in the table, get that linked list, iterate through that linked list and get the keys, and put them into this array. So that we end up basically with a, another copy of the, of the keys in an array. And that's just within our iterator. So our iterator class is going to look something like this. We're going to have a class iterator helper. And it's going to take a generic. Um, I'm going to use the generic T just because it's different from K and V. And we've already used E before. Um, this will avoid the warning from Eclipse, for example, where it says you've got a K. And then if you use a K in the iterator helper, you're, you're potentially overriding the K. And this is going to implement. an iterator of t's, OK? And the iterator interface says that we need to have a has next method and a next method, and we can potentially have other things like remove and so on and so forth, OK? So we're going to make this array of keys, um, like we've seen, like we've done before. So let's just declare that. as a type t array. And we're going to have a position variable that we're going to use um, just as we go through our keys to know where we are. So our constructor is going to do all the work. Our constructor is going to go through our hash, get each of the linked list, go through the linked list, get the keys, and put them into our keys array. So our constructor is going to look something like this. So we're going to have a public iterator helper. And we're just going to have a default constructor that takes no arguments. And we're going to define this keys variable to be an array. And of course, this is a Java, a Java generic array. So we have to actually cast 
that as an array of T's. And it's going to be an object array that we cast. And it will be of size the number of elements that we have in our hash. Okay? And so that's our globally scoped variable that's in the whole class. And that, that's how many elements we've already put into the hash. So now what we need to do is we need to go through our table, get all of those linked lists, and add the keys from those linked lists. So the way that we do that is that we just start with a little variable so that we know where we are. You'll see how that counter is used in a second. And now we're going to have a for loop for int i equal to 0. i is less than table size. And this table size is our globally scoped table size variable that defines how big our array of linked lists is, i++. Plus plus. And for each element, we want to get the linked list. And so don't forget, our linked lists are linked list of hash element K, V, we'll call that list. And this is just from our globally scoped hash array at position i. OK? Now all we need to do is we've got this, this linked list. We need to go through the linked list and get the keys. So we can use the iterator. So let's just say for hash element kv, and I'm going to call that h in list, keys. So here's my keys array. So keys at position p that I'm using this p variable that I defined initially as 0, is equal to h dot key. In fact, we'll have to do a little cast here. Because we just use the t. If you use a k here, you don't really need to cast. Um, it's just because it's just to convince Java that this is the same generic as our key is. Okay, and that's the end of our for loop. And then we set position, which is our globally scoped, sorry, our, our variable that's scoped within our iterator to be zero. So what we're doing here is we're getting every key out of the hash and putting it into this array called keys that we've defined to be scoped. We're using one variable, this p0, as a counter so that as we get the next key, we add it on. And we're using this i variable to go through the tables, OK? So there's a couple of different moving parts that you've got to get your head around. Then we only need two other methods. We need a hasNext method, and we need a next. And our has next method is basically whether this variable position is at the end of the list. So we can write something like this, public boolean has next return position less than the length of the keys array. If position is, the length of, is less than the length of the keys array, we've got some, some other object to return. And then our next method, I'm just going to write it up here because it's quite easy. So our public t next. So we want to make sure that we've got something to return. So if not has next, 
return null. And if we've got something to return, we're just going to return the next key and we're going to increment our position counter. So return keys position plus plus. Okay. So we've used an array. We've used an array to hold our keys. We've populated the array when the iterator was called. We don't want to populate the array until the iterator is called for use. Because as you add things to the hash, that will change, right? So then you, when you want to iterate through the hash, then you populate it. And then we just say we've got a simple counter. So do we have more elements? If we do, we just return it and increment our counter. So our iterator of keys for a hash is pretty straightforward. This does not guarantee the order of the keys, and that's typical of how most hashes work. When you ask for the keys back, you don't get them in any particular order. And of course, the complexity of this is big O of n. It must be because you have to get every key back. <coughs> 